Pope Benedict XVI is back in Rome after an eight-day visit to the Holy Land. I'm John Thavis, Catholic News Service Rome Bureau Chief. And I'm Cindy Wooden, Catholic News Service Senior Correspondent. We were with the Pope in the Holy Land. We're here today to talk about his trip on the Catholic News Service Rome Report. The Pope's pilgrimage was aimed primarily at four audiences. Christians, Muslims, Jews, and at a different degree, Palestinians. We're going to look at each of those audiences today and see how the Pope communicated. His trip began in Jordan, his first visit to an Arab country, and it's a predominantly Muslim country where the government has taken the lead in promoting dialogue with Christians. Cindy, Jordan seemed to be the ideal place for the Pope to build bridges to the Muslim uh, moderates in the world. Right. And the Pope started with an act of respect by visiting the main mosque in Amman and pausing for a moment of reflection in a place where thousands of Muslims pray each week. Then he went outside and spoke to Muslim clerics, university professors, and diplomats about how our belief in the one God who created all of us requires us to treat each other with respect and to work together to bring moral values to society. Now the reaction was overwhelmingly positive. Would you say after Jordan, Regensburg is history? Regensburg is history in the sense that it is in the past, it is being remembered and not forgotten. But the Muslim host, the Pope's Muslim hosts accepted his apology and pledged to move forward and build a new, stronger dialogue. The Pope's next stop was Jerusalem, and his first big event was at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial. He gave a five-minute speech there, trying to imagine what it was like for Jewish victims to experience the Holocaust, imagining Jewish families suddenly have their lives and their future disrupted and in some cases obliterated. I thought it was a very poetic uh, speech, a very moving speech. Not everyone was satisfied. Some of the Jewish leaders at Yad Vashem said, look, we have a German pope. He actually lived under the Nazi regime, and yet he came to Yad Vashem and did not speak about his own experience. They were disappointed in that and in the fact that he did not specifically mention the Nazi perpetrators. Cindy, you followed the rest of the Pope's uh, events with Jewish audiences. How did that go? Well, the first stop was the Western Wall, a site sacred to Jews, where like millions of Jews throughout centuries, Pope Benedict stopped and prayed, and then left a written prayer in the crevice of the stones in the wall, praying for peace in Jerusalem. Then he went to a meeting with the chief rabbis of Israel, and emphasized once again the importance of Catholic-Jewish dialogue and joint efforts um, to study together, especially for Christians to learn more about the Jewish roots of our faith. The Pope went to Bethlehem for a whole day. This was Palestine Day. And I would say this was a day that was the most politically charged of the pilgrimage. Palestinians wanted to hear what the Pope had to say, of course, but they also wanted to air their grievances. Now, the Pope had some very important things to say to Palestinians. One, he supported independent statehood for Palestine. Two, he criticized the Israeli security wall. He said it was one of the saddest sites of his pilgrimage. And three, he challenged Palestinians. He said, whatever the injustices here, please do not take the path of violence and terrorism. So it was a political balancing act. And the Pope also spoke repeatedly to a particular portion of the Palestinians, the Christians of the Holy Land, who are experiencing the same kind of economic and political pressures as all Palestinians are, and are more and more tempted to leave the Holy Land to seek a better life elsewhere. The Pope pleaded with them to stay, to keep the church alive in the Holy Land. And of course, the Pope was above all a pilgrim. He went to the holy places, not only Christian places, but places sacred to uh, Islam and Judaism. And his point there, the thread that ran through the trip, I think, was that God intervenes in human history. Here are the places where it happened. We need to be reminded of this because it brings us hope. And of course, that's a strong message in the Holy Land where hope is a very scarce commodity. I'm John Thavis with Cindy Wooden for Catholic News Service.